Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to the first of two shows in which I'm going to take a deep dive into the Alesis Prestige Artist Digital Piano, which I've got in this box and in this box I've got the accessory pack. So let's take a look at what we get. The first box you get the piano itself obviously and this feels really light considering it's got 88 weighted keys. I've lugged a few 88 weighted keyboards around in my time and this one is very portable, very neat and yet uh, really impressive considering it's got all these hefty keys in it. Yeah. We also get a sustain pedal and a music stand. In the second box we get a rather hefty piano stool in bits it doesn't come <laughs> it doesn't come built like that in the box and we also get this piano stand i've just put it together i'll show you how to do that in a minute it comes in three sections only eight screws and it's got three pedals just like a huge grand piano you also get a little bag of bits and a spanner in case you haven't got one so let's start off with the stool shall we And the sides look just as simple, just screw that into the base, so four of those. So there you have it, you've just got to pop that piano onto the stand. It does feel a little like I'm making a how-to video for IKEA here, but it really is super simple. And then finally, the music stand. Here it is, all put together, and it does feel rather nice, and it really is a nice looking thing. So let's plug it in. We've got USB, which can be used for MIDI. We've got a sustain pedal input for the sustain pedal that comes with the piano. We've also got the pedal unit input, which is different from the sustain, because don't forget this has got three pedals on it. So let's plug that one in. We've also got a left and a right. Left can be used for mono. We've got an aux in and obviously the power. So I'll use the USB for MIDI. unbalanced 6.35 millimeter standard jacks and the power and I've closed the curtains behind me because I was looking a little bit like Dracula when the sun come out puts me in silhouette you can't see me which is probably a good thing but you also couldn't see the piano <laughs> Great. First thing I've noticed on that actually is that the, the action's really, really nice. It's got a really sort of smooth but hefty action. There's no sort of play in it. Second thing I noticed is the speakers are pretty decent actually. I say actually because there are only one, two, three, four little speakers in there and they're all about, I don't know, six or seven centimeters wide. So you don't expect to get much bass. I'm not getting massive amounts of bass. but I'm getting enough clarity in there. Yeah, and the keys up at the top are a lot lighter to press. The one at the very bottom feels heavier than the one at the top, which is what you get on the piano. Because you've got smaller hammers. Also what I'm noticing is there's no note stealing and that's because this has got 256 note polyphony or up to 256 notes. So when you're playing uh, across the keyboard, you don't get note stealing. If you did on the synth, for example, and you've got eight voices, when you hit the ninth note, the first one that you hit disappears and it doesn't happen on this, which is what you expect from a piano. Got 
quite a few sounds on this. That was bright piano and it was nice and bright, really cut through a mix. Grand piano one. Grand piano two. I'm not gonna go through all the sounds in this, this episode. I just really wanted to get a feel for, for what it feels like to play as an instrument. And it is really good, the action's really nice. A weighted keyboard's different to like a semi-weighted keyboard that you get on a synthesizer because it acts like a piano and if you don't know how a piano works, basically you've got the key and then you've got a hammer and the hammer hits the string. So when you press the key, you've got all these mechanisms behind it and you can feel those mechanisms as they hit the string and as the hammer pops up as well. And you're getting a similar feel to this. It's different to a synthesizer as well in that the semi-weighted actions on a synthesizer are spring, spring-loaded basically. Whereas on a weighted keyboard, it uses gravity so it, it bounces back gradually. If you've done your maths or physics at school, or if you can remember any of it, you remember force of gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second, so 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's the speed they bounce back up, it's gravity. And it might sound like I'm talking nonsense here, but if you play a piano keyboard and you play a synth keyboard, they feel completely different. And this one feels like a piano, which is hugely important. Yeah, that bright piano really pops out, doesn't it? It might not be the most natural sound, but in a mix, that'll really punch through. It's great. Back in the day, nobody had real piano sounds. Nobody had anything that could do grand piano sounds and the core game one, stuff like that. People used to hammer that for dance tracks. nice to play. So three pedals, why three pedals? I did say I'd mention this earlier. One is for softening, so the left hand one, pressing the key in the same, at the same velocity, makes it a lot softer, sort of dampened. Well not dampened because the sustain are the damp pedals really. So uh, the right hand one is like the right hand one on a normal piano, it's the sustain pedal. While you've got the pedal pushed down, the notes sustain. Take it off and they stop. Not to be confused with a loud pedal, that doesn't exist. If you don't have the pedal on. Really simple, but the middle one is the interesting one, and this is the one that you get on huge grand pianos. And this will only hold down the notes that are played when you push the pedal. That one's now held down. They're not. Using the normal sustain pedal. I'd always wondered that when I saw grand pianos that had three, and every piano I'd ever played only had two. So it's nice to have the three pedals on this. Makes it feel a bit classy. The only thing I'd say though is they're a little bit short, so because the whole thing's nice and neat and sit next to a wall and doesn't stick out too much, the pedals themselves have only got about this much length to them. So you get used to it pretty quick, but I'd prefer them to be a little bit 
wider space than a little bit longer but if they were longer you'd have to sit further back so yeah so it's sort of a bit of a compromise there but not a bad one it's just you do get used to it but it's a bit like driving a, a small car where you're trying to not hit the brake and the accelerator at the same time maybe concepionists don't wear trainers though maybe they wear more delicate footwear i don't know i think they probably do so all in all very very first impressions what do i think of this I really like the feel of this. It feels like an instrument. It feels like a nice classy piano to play. I've got a Korg SV1 in the studio and that's about 1500 pounds. And I think the key bed on this feels better. This is a brand new, obviously, and the SV1's maybe 10, maybe 15 years old. I think it's 15 years old, something like that. But this really does feel nice. And for the price of the, of the actual piano itself, really really impressive plus the size of it it's really neat it looks nice it doesn't look like some old sort of uh, louis the 14 thing but this is going in the lounge that's why i'm trying it in the lounge actually uh, it's going next to the sofa not sitting in the bay but i do need something for the house not for the studio that's nice and neat and feels like a piano and this is it anyway i will see you next time